The following podcast is their virtual made event. My name is Draw Phil Draw, and I'll be your host alongside my partner Yoder. This is Virtual Made, where we talk about creating anything and everything. First, talking out of the guest's corner, he is a rising freelancer who works in the fields of illustration, comic books, and more. He is Perry Penrod! Hey, Phil, how's it going? Welcome to the podcast. Uh, thank you for taking time out of your day to, to chat with us and stuff. Hey, thank you guys for having me. It's real exciting. Yeah, I'm excited that you agreed to come on today uh, and talk shop about what you do so many things <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I met you through our, our mutual friend Noah and sharing the same art school yeah yeah we yeah you go to PK Digital Media and gosh I don't even know how I met Noah but it's crazy how these things kind of weave together yeah it's it's a small small little community down there um we, we've we've talked here and there but today I'd, I'd like to dig a little deeper and uh whether that's through highlighting the things you're interested in art wise or the projects you're working on or where you hope to take things in the future yeah i'm game to talk about anything i'm glad to uh, be here and be able to help you guys out awesome uh, t to start off, it's it's quickly becoming a mainstay intro segment of our interviews to ask our guests this, but um, do you happen to remember the first thing you ever drew or created? Um, I think somewhat. I was actually, I, I'm in the middle of moving, and um, I had come across this little book I had, and it was like, uh, How to Draw Mystical Creatures, <laughs> and it's, it's such an old book, and I was like, oh my god, I can't believe I ever kept this thing. And I opened it up, and there was, like, all some beautifully atrocious things that I, I guess were dragons. Mm -hmm. Maybe some <laughs> frogs. Um, so maybe that, maybe kind of some fantasy creatures. I'm not sure, but it was definitely a um, some type of dip into the past. Was it, like, um, um, was it like a how to draw? Or... Yeah, it's, um, it's a really cool, it's, like, a very, very old how to draw book, and it has, like... Um, Medusa, and there was, uh, I think there was like Valkyrie in there, and dragons and Whoa. Cerberus, and it's like this really, really cute, old, cartoony how to draw book. And I feel like everybody I talk to has like all gotten it from Ollie's. <laughs> I'm not, not like an Ollie's staple book, but like I like pulled it out from the depths of a box, and like I don't even remember packing it. Everyone was like, whoa, like, oh my god, like, I remember that book. So it's just this beautiful cryptic that I feel like every semi-fantasy artist has somehow managed to, uh, like, accrue throughout their life. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> it's like an Ollie's exclusive drawing book or something. Um, yeah, it's, <laughs> it is the best book ever. I totally recommend having it in your library. Even now, you never know when are we going to need to draw mystical creatures. Awesome. What was that? Um, I guess the the catalyst for drawing fantastical subjects for you. Oh um, yeah, more than likely. I remember it was a book that I had um, always carried around with me as a kid. And there's like one specific unicorn drawing in there that I swear I tried to emulate over and over mm. and over again when I was a kid. Um, and it's it stayed from then until now, so it definitely has um, has influenced a larger part of my art, and I couldn't bear to part with it. So that's awesome. What 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 about um, I guess drawing from that book? What made the art of creating like stick? I guess it's the idea of mom. Um, there's like no rules. Mm -hmm. in a way it's just kind of like uh like I, whenever whenever i watch cartoons and stuff like that um i was a big animal person i was big into loving animals and um like you know injure like playing with them in the real world and exploring and running around and finding bugs and stuff 
So then, like, you know, every time I would find or I would watch cartoons, I would, like, instantly look, be like, okay, is there going to be, like, a cool animal in this episode? And, like, you know, if there wasn't, I'd be like, oh, like, that's kind of, like, I was, like, hoping to see some, like, I don't know, like, a T-Rex or something. I was like, well, you know what? Like, <laughs> I'll draw my own T-Rex. And I guess it kind of, like, went from there. Like, if I wasn't able to find any cool animal media things, and which had, like, cool animated animals that are, like, super colorful and stuff like that, I just kind of was, like, going to draw them on my own then. And, um... So there's a mix of being involved a lot with nature and uh, the fact that I just wanted to see more cool animals, even though they're just like little scribbles. It was something. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I, I think whenever I ask anyone that it has to do with the, the world building aspect um, and being able to just kind of do anything with it whether uh, to, to supplement what they didn't see in any media or just in the world in general. Yeah, I'd say it's, uh, you know, when I talk to a lot of people, it's like a lot of like, their, I mean, obviously their interests directly pertain to um, what they draw. Because mm -hmm. um, obviously they like it. And while there may be some content out there, a lot of times, you know, they're influenced enough to make content of it of their own. Um, that's also how you get more and more cool stuff out there is, is the fact that these kind of influences more of this content and then you know the cycle continues to influence younger generations as well it's it's pretty cool yeah awesome uh when you mentioned you mentioned like uh s seeing animals in shows or, or wanting to see them uh when did the subject of including animals in your art become like a like super consistent thing or has it always been that way i guess um i'd say more than likely it's always been that way um I do draw people here and there, but whenever I always remember every time I was in art class or something, I would try to find some type of excuse to be like, okay, so like the subject is like politics. And I'm just like, cool. <laughs> Does that mean I could draw like an elephant and a donkey? Like, I guess like all he really wants to do is just draw animals. It yeah. could be like anything. <laughs> and I would just like try to shove an animal in there and be like, this isn't even part of the subject. I was like, yeah, it is. It's just like an animal wearing you know, whatever the subject was. It totally <laughs> works. Animals are, like, yeah. soaked in symbolism, so it's easy to kind of uh, sneak them into anything. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I Maybe, not, even if I didn't know that, I would just try to, like, find some type of, like, way to justify, like, why'd you draw another horse today? I don't know. Like, <laughs> horses are cool. Like, <laughs> I'm like, 12, and I only know of horses and wolves, and that's what I will draw at the end of my day. <laughs> Uh, what what are your favorite types of animals to draw and, and why? Oh gosh, um, I know big question. I, yeah, it's a big question. There's so <laughs> many animals out there that are great. Um, although I love birds, I still cannot wrap my mind around how to properly draw birds. Um, I still can't. But either. they're pretty fun. Then, or what's up? I still can't either, as <laughs> I was working on Berg Project myself. Yeah, they're just so, like, you think, like, they're just so funky. It's like dogs, you're just kind of like, okay, that's, um, that's dog-shaped. Yeah. You got, like, four legs, you got some type of dog face, and birds are just, like, you go look at an eagle, and then, like, you look at some type of swan or heron bird, and you're just like, oh, what, like, what happened here? <laughs> what happened here? It's so... It's so jarring. They're all beautiful, but it's just like, man. Um, I don't know. I guess, like, yeah, definitely birds, wolves, horses were, like, the three staple animals. And then um, everything kind of, like, spidered up from there. I don't draw horses as much. I'm mostly... I'm drawing canines. I've started to research bird anatomy a lot more in the recent days. Mm -hmm. Um... So more mammals than than anything else, I suppose. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I also, uh, on, on the subject of, of that, I, I noticed you, you collect a lot of, uh, for reference for these types of drawings, you collect a lot of taxidermy. Yeah, um, I, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a little bit different where, um, it's cool. And as you know, we're, we were offered, uh, like, models in class human models in class and um it's always really easy to get like people references and stuff like that but it's 
a lot harder to like go up to a coyote in the wild and be like, hey, like hold still just like one second and don't <laughs> don't maul me. And I'll just draw you real quick. <laughs> um, exactly. And it's definitely taxidermy can be super funky. Um and not the greatest reference, but sometimes you can find some pretty cool stuff or go to museums um and work from their their stuff there. It makes things a lot easier. Nice. Yeah, I was just looking at your work right now. I, a lot of this stuff that you, uh, this types of subjects you described, I see a lot of them there. Um, I, I think the first thing I know about your artwork in general is just the in, 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 intri intricacies <laughs> in the line work, the interesting palettes you choose, and the consistent subject matter. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, a lot of it's just influenced by a lot of other artists. I can definitely say um, I had been on, uh, and I'm sure you're, you may be familiar with the website, the DeviantArt website. Mm -hmm. At all? Wait, or, wait, wait, come again? Sorry, you cut um, out. Oh, that's okay. I don't know if you ever, have you ever been on the DeviantArt website? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that wonderful little thing. Yeah, <laughs> um, I've been on there for, for quite a number of years. Um, and I, got, I think it was like eight years or something. I checked this morning. Um, but I I will definitely say without having an, an influence of full of friends there um, and, and inspirations and stuff like that, I would not have, you know, half the influence of, of art or um, the one to pursue uh, art as an education or anything mm. like that. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's a big looking at other people and, and making other art friends is definitely um, definitely influence uh, the creation process hmm. of it. So. Yeah, I, I definitely feel that too. Um, I've been sporadically on DeviantArt. I mean, I made one on I was thirteen. I was on there for like four years, and then I, I started a new one three years later. And I met mm. some cool people on there that. Uh, kind of just kept me going and made uh, kept me making things yeah having that having a network of artists um really really helps because it's you know you can have a you have a great network of friends um and uh but it's also great to have a network of friends who are artists because that way it's just kind of like you know you're you're always have that idea of if you hit an art block or something, like maybe your friends and stuff are creating, and maybe that'll help you push past um, any stops that you may have in your art. Constantly yeah. being surrounded by a creative environment um, is a huge, huge, huge influencer um, of creating serious work or even silly work. It really doesn't matter. It's it's just great to have that sense of community um, in art. And with podcasts like this, it's super cool. Yeah. I, I think um, I, I don't know. I I, I personally I th I think that's always that's been what I've kind of been known for online more recently. Um, just kind of like finding people who are also artists and doing the sim sim have similar goals, and I kind of just uh, kind of gather them together, and we all just start hanging out and looking at each other, like, oh, you're drawing too. I'm gonna draw too, and uh, yeah, I I love building communities. Yeah, I love your, you have, I mean, yeah, we mostly, I mostly found out about this through um, the art group that you started on Discord. Yeah. Uh, it's really great. I see a lot of, a lot, I see a lot of artists creating groups, groups like that. And uh, it's super great to have, have those opportunities um, if you don't have them in real life. Yeah. Or the physical, rather. <laughs> <laughs> um, tra transitioning back to, um, we we can continue talking about community, but I I, I was uh, on the subject of animals. I, I know it's uh c closely related to like being uh an an anthro artist. Um, I, I was just wondering like how does that uh relate to what you do and what's it like uh, occupying that world? Um, it's definitely a, it's it's a different sense of community. Um, yeah, it is definitely a different community. Um. I think a lot yeah. of it definitely stems from the early days of like, I love drawing animals and this is super fun. And then um, I had 
found DeviantArt uh, through a friend of mine, and they were like, okay, like, you know, like, you're really great at art, and I was like, gosh, like, 13 or something, and she's like, you gotta post stuff here, and I was like, okay, I did, I will, <laughs> and um, I think my first upload was a piece of animal art, and I had gotten a lot of people commenting on it, and um, because it was animal art, um, I guess... I didn't really find that community of anthro artists. It was just kind of like I was like introduced to it because other animal artists like commented on it and they're like, oh, this is really great. And then being new to the internet, I wanted to like click on absolutely freaking everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then it just kind of went from, you know, profile jumping and, and finding um, other people's art there. Um, and eventually I kind of found like uh, the anthro art community. Um, mm. Yes. Yeah, I was saying it's drawing animals, and that obviously goes a lot of hand in hand. Yeah, um, yeah. I've I've gotten a I've gotten a, a you know a lot of friends from it, but also a lot of commissions from it. Um, but you know, kind of tying those two together is um, you know you can draw a dog, and it'll look it'll look good and look like a dog, but it's like you still like um. Uh, it's applying the two facts of, I guess, the research of the more serious side of art and researching canine anatomy. Mm -hmm. And then also getting into that little more serious or like a little more silly, whimsical side of um, doing anthropomorphic art. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of, at least in, in my way of working with it, it's kind of where the two, two can intertwine. Yeah, I, I think you merged those well, those worlds really well, uh, actually. Just looking at like your your the bust pictures, and I don't know, literally any any dog you draw, you, you can tell like you you studied it and you've you've stylized realism. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. I think um, the, putting it that way, stylizing realism definitely is a is a way to put it. I had um. A teacher gosh back in high school and uh, she really said something that that definitely stuck with me uh, and it was it was along the lines of that where she said you can draw like a cartoon animal you can draw a cartoon person um, but in order to make it convincing even if it's a cartoon you need to understand how it works in the real world first mm. yeah and it definitely was um it definitely was one of those pieces of advice that I had taken into my college career. Um, Cause you know, people, people know how people move. Um, people don't always know how dogs move. We're not dogs. We don't know how dogs operate. We don't know how, you know, we don't know how it feels to have birds wings and, and fly and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but that's why it's still very important because we'll, we'll know like when, you say feathers on a bird's wings look wrong. We'll kind of be like, ah, that doesn't look quite right. Um, but that's where the idea of, of researching uh, can come into play, where you can make your uh, cartoon characters or, or otherwise more convincing or believable, even if they're cartoons. Yeah, uh, I, I think that's well yeah. said. I, I had, um, the, there's this illustrator I've followed for years, his name is Will Terrell. Um, and mm -hmm. he, he said this great thing, uh, that he passed on from somebody else, but it's just that you have to know the rules before you can break them. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think that's, that's definitely a, a big thing. And, and being an artist is, um, knowing the boundaries, so you know, just how to push them, um, before it gets a little bit too absurd. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Um, let's see. I asked you about uh, what it, what existing in the gray area of sort of balancing the the fundamentals and and, and knowing like real animal anatomy and uh, and being an anthro artist. Um, but I I guess backing up. Let's see. Um. I don't know. Do, do, is it is it weird being in both worlds? Do you, do you often tell people about orbiting the fandom, or are you more reserved about it? Um, I guess it's a it's a fifty fifty. Um, I actually have two different blogs. 
uh, for it. I have a blog for uh, my more anthro art, my silly headworld stuff, and then I have a quote unquote professional blog, which is uh, geared towards my freelance work. Mm-hmm. Um, it definitely is like living two different lives on the internet. Yeah. Because um, the one is very silly and it's just like uh, a bunch of, I don't want to say goofing off because, you know, you can, you can have a, you can actually have a very serious career being an anthro artist, um, you know, by all means. But um, sometimes it is, it's definitely been a lesson to learn because uh, I'm very used to uh, handling or not handling, my gosh, uh, working with clients who are author, also other anthro artists or consumers of anthro art and otherwise. Um, and a lot of those interactions are very casual where it's just like, you know, someone may send me a note and be like, hey, like, I got this character, like this dragon I want drawn. Like, can you draw it? It's like, oh, man, yeah, like super cool. And it's uh, it's very, like, very laid back because um, mm-hmm. you just kind of feel like you're working with person to person. Um, and, uh, it's, it's very, very lax and, um, very simple to work with. Um, but then whenever you start getting into the freelance stuff, it's like, I have to, I have this whole other different blog and it's a lot more, I don't want to say polished, but, um, you know, it has a lot more of a very different type of art posted up there. Mm -hmm. Um, and I haven't, I have worked with, um, a couple of people now in a professional setting. Um, but it is very different learning these two different sides um, because, you know, I can't go up to an art director and be like, yo, man, like, what's up? What's draw? I have to be, <laughs> a, you know, a little bit more, a um, little bit more professional because we're more one-on-one uh, business to business. Um, so it's, it's sometimes it is a little bit weird uh, switching between, I guess, those two different sides of the art world. Um, but both are it was so much fun. I see a lot of other artists do it. Um, mm-hmm. I think one of my biggest worries going into this was, uh, can I maintain being an anthro artist and being a freelance artist at the same time? Um, mm-hmm. Because it was, it was like a large part of my art exploration. It was a large part of me um, growing up and developing. And to just kind of be like, okay, this has been fun. I'm going to go to freelance now it seems like it seems kind of like you know it seems kind of cheap and to just kind of be like all right i'm out this has been great yeah so um yeah beginning to find that balance has been um pretty big stepping stones um but i i do see other artists out there that do that have started in the anthro community um and do extraordinary art and it's this beautiful and it's great and then i follow their alternate blogs and they're also just doing beautiful beautiful work there too um so it's it's definitely possible it's just about getting there so i gotcha yeah i think you you put it or described it to me uh pretty well um (laughs) (laughs) no that's fine like i i I wanted to hear about that um so, so you the uh, the anthro art is that is that stitchy face? Yeah, that's um, that's my normal handle. Uh, it's been that for quite a number of years. Uh, that's my uh, one side or Politicit is um, the Tumblr, which will probably be switching over to stitch, stitchy face here soon. Um, yeah, and then the other one's just Harry Penrod. I gotcha. <laughs> Little name, yeah. <laughs> is is it cool having like, like these three different like I guess aliases? I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I kind of think that's cool. <laughs> it's it is kind of fun sometimes. Um, where it's it's just kind of like I'll log on. I actually have two different twitters as well. Um, yes. and I'll get on my one twitter and I'll just be like, I worked in my office today. <laughs> this is what it looked like. It's going great. And then, like, I posted on the other one, and I was just like, hey, this is my office. I managed to shut my entire boob inside, like, a fucking door today, and <laughs> it hurt like hell. And it's like, it's like the same picture in everything, and, like, just two completely different, um, <laughs> like, types of attitudes. And it, it is kind of fun because it's like sometimes you just got to get those, like, a little bit of silly out there. Um, and then other times it's just like, okay, this is like, this is professional time. 
Um, it, but it's also not to say those two personalities can't um, work together sometimes because you don't always want to seem like super, um, super, super, super professional. It's nice to seem like, you know, friendly and approachable, <laughs> but it is definitely two different, two different types of people. Yeah. <laughs> The, the the Perry corporate and the Perry after dark. <laughs> yeah, this is exactly what it is. It's just like, all right, so this is incognito mode Perry, and then uh, this is just regular mode Perry. <laughs> I, I, I kind of regret that I only have like one one alias online. It's barely an alias because it includes it's draw fill draw and it includes my name. So like everyone knows my real name online. <laughs> I have no like I have no, I don't have my After Dark channel at all or anything. It's all me. <laughs> I mean, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing though. But I, um, one of the things we had talked about at at our school was um was branding yourself. True. And and I, I guess that that's one thing that I can admire is that the fact that people do have these. Like, like you have draw, Phil, draw, and like it's pretty reliable to be like, okay, like I bet Phil has a Twitter, and like I know what to look up right away. I look up draw, Phil, draw on Twitter, and I can probably find you there. Um, and there's definitely that great sense of reliability is that you are able to find um, these people easily by by their name. If you want to follow content creators on YouTube, if you want to follow content creators on Instagram or Twitter and stuff like that, um, having having that singular name that people know you by is pretty great because then it can be like, I like, you know, Oh, you're that guy from Instagram. That's super popular. Um, like I had no idea you had a YouTube, like now I'm going to follow you on YouTube. It's, it's a lot easier to, um, I don't know, sometimes get yourself out there like that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is. That's true. Um, all, all my stuff is draw fill. So, uh, I can kind of just put that out there and, uh, or even just fill and people know <laughs> what it is and what they're dealing with. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's definitely it's cool to have hand, hand, like um, a recognizable handle like that. <laughs> um, I wanted to transition into talking about comics. Um, because I, I, yeah. I I've seen I've seen your comics and uh, they're really good. Um, I'm gonna share some during the video. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, when when did you get into comics? Um. Or how? I got into comics. Or yeah, I guess both. Yeah, when and how. Um. Gee, uh, quite a while ago, I never, I guess high school, I'd say early high school was when I started reading comics. Mm -hmm. um, I, I actually never, up until I started going to college, I never read any physical comics. Um, all the comics I read were actually web comics. Nice. Yeah, it was really great. Um, I, you know, I guess some real popular ones are uh, the Black Blood Alliance um and strays was a comic that was real popular um a red tail's dream was definitely a huge influence and stand still stay silent because they were just so accessible mm -hmm. um because i grew up in this small rural pennsylvania town and i didn't even know comic book stores were a thing <laughs> like i knew you know comic books existed i wasn't you know like it's that sheltered but um I didn't know that, like, you know, there's just a place I could just go down and just, like, buy a comic book. And to me, like, comic books were all on the internet. And for hours and hours on end, I would, like, read I, seven or eight different web comics at a time. And just because it was, like, you know, this, this artist-made free content for me to consume. Because, you know, I was a young 14-year-old kid with no money or car because I can't drive. <laughs> Um, and it was just great to have that kind of kind of opportunity to be able to read read these artist made comics, and that definitely really 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 influenced uh, a lot of my work. Nice, yeah. I I, I had a um, I had a phase uh, where, where I was like really into web comics, and I was this was back when like um, I mean people still do this, but like I I went to like their website to read their comic, and I I. I um i read like i just saw like video game type comics comics and, or like comedy and stuff like that um but uh i i think i think now um there's all there's all these different services you can kind of just have them all collected like uh tapastic and stuff like that and i think that's where i mm -hmm. go to now um yeah 
but what did when you uh, were getting into those comics what did what did you uh what did you notice first about the medium that you uh that you really enjoyed or what what really engaged you the most i'd say the fact uh, of style really Mm -hmm. um was a big one because i was reading seven or eight different comics but all these comics were um by different artists Mm -hmm. and obviously all those artists were influenced by entirely different people from one another um and lived entirely different lives and so like you know every single one of those comics had a whole different style and um that was really that was really the biggest biggest influence or biggest love of it was um you know a comic that i read was done traditionally and digitally it was like a black they used black ink um and then mm. they scanned it in and they did this beautiful watercolor digital overlay of color on it nice. um another artist did their comic entirely in black and white and it was just so crazy to see these beautiful different amounts of mediums and stuff um, that people had done yeah, I think I appreciate that about the medium too, with uh, especially mm-hmm. what you just said. A lot of manga artists uh, from Japan that I follow uh, have started adapting that technique um, mm-hmm. with uh, just scanning in what what they've inked and then digitally watercoloring something. And then I, now, as as an adult uh, artist, like in the midst of his career, I can I can be like, oh, huh, I'm gonna try that today. And <laughs> yeah. there's something really nice about that. Yeah, it's really, um, it's great how, how fast, um, you know, technology has become a little bit more accessible for artists as far as that goes. Um, you know, scanners are now, are no longer this giant thing that only schools (laughs) have. It's like this little tiny computer sized scanner that you can put in your studio. And then, you know, now you too can create like and scan anything you want or need. Um, yeah, that, that. That method of um, of inking traditionally and then scanning, I've seen a lot of people do it, or um, or even just sketching traditionally, mm-hmm. and then scanning in and then inking digitally. Uh, everything, a lot of the comic artists I follow, everything at least seems to start traditionally. I can't say I know an artist that does digital thumbnails to digital finish. Yeah, even even myself, a digital media major, I I still draw my sketchbook all the time, and I because like it's mm-hmm. easier for me, and then I just scan it in, and I'll just paint right over that. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I don't know. Maybe it's that sense of just like connection. I don't know. I yeah. guess it's really different for everyone how how they perceive that. It's it's interesting. I I think I talked uh, in the other interviews we talked about this, and it was just kind of like. <laughs> the the pen against the uh, against the the resistance of the paper or or just the smell of the paper there's all these things that just make you want to do that first yeah the raw feeling of it i guess maybe <laughs> even the control of it is like you can kind of predict a little bit more where your hand's going to go you know if it's touching paper and you're sketching as opposed to a computer where you may have to deal with lag or um you know your pen pressure stops working yeah <laughs> and it maybe yeah yeah oh my gosh those struggles or you lose your tablet pen the greatest sin of all <laughs> yeah and you can't you can't just call it so oh gosh they need a that would be so great get one of those key fobs and like look up to your pen <laughs> but um uh, uh, back to you. I was. I was meant to ask you about your your comic projects that you're working on right now. I don't, I don't know if there's just one or if it's plural. Um, gosh, I guess, I guess two, technically. Um, I have one I've been working on since, I think, the, not last year, but the years before, 24-hour comic day. Ooh. Um, just a short comic called A Chronicle. And, uh, it had, it had begun at 24-hour comic day. And I managed to get as far as, um, thumbnailing and then sketching all of the pages out. And I think I completed inking uh, five of them, and I managed to color one before I passed out at like 5 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> um, but it has been one of those where I have, uh, I've liked it enough where I just kind of continued to keep going back to it every summer. Um, right now, I as it stands, I've finished eight pages, and I think there is 
going to be in total 16 pages, I, I believe, is what I kind of projected. Mm-hmm. Um, it's definitely been a learning process. I, I think one of the hardest things with, with comic making, at least for me, is uh, consistency as far as as far as page coloring pages go yeah I yeah it, it's hard because you know as you go through the comic comics takes take a while to do they take a while for you to sketch and color and line and um but then through that like you know you're learning each step of the way every time you do a new piece you learn something new and that's kind of where it can get a little bit more difficult is you're like you know you, you start at page one and page one looks a certain way and then by the time you're at page, you know, 300 or something, you look at page one, it it could be entirely different. (laughs) Yeah, you could have grown as an artist in between page one and page five. Yeah, it's yeah, it can. (laughs) Yeah, I've seen people take leaps and bounds uh, with creating comics like that. So that's definitely been a little bit of a, I don't want to say a problem, but it's some it's something to work past because I'm on my third pass, I think of like recoloring it and I just need to bite the bullet and just like do it. Yeah. Um, Cause unfortunately it could get into that cycle where I'm just like, okay, okay. Like this is gonna be my last time redoing it. And then that last time could be five more times. And then the comic never gets out. A, so a lot of the comic artists I've talked to about, about these subjects have, have kind of said the same thing. You gotta just, you gotta just do it, man. Yeah, it's it is a huge, it is a huge, huge, huge blockage. Um, but the great thing is, is you know, like people are gonna love whatever you put out, like no matter what. Is they're just gonna be like, whoa, like this is a crazy good comic, and you may see a lot of flaws in it. But like, man, people are there and and super supportive, and they're gonna love. They may not even notice, um, you know, all the all the crazy. Uh, changes or developments or they may they may still love it um but yeah it's definitely something you gotta you gotta really push past push oh my goodness push past and uh just keep creating yeah. uh, uh, on the the subject of consistency we were talking back there um yeah that's definitely something i i, I struggle with myself when it comes to mm. comics right right now i'm working on a uh, character designs for like a for what would be a short film like it's just like a, a, a mm-hmm. fake project um it's with for my internship and i just finished it up and i i i found out that like consistency might be my my one of my weakest things because like, i'll draw a character and it'll never look the same yeah it's across the board it can be real it can be real tough like that um i think you know i've seen like, a couple of ways to help it's like you know, if you're doing comics or something like that, make an expression page. Just like, because you never, you're never gonna know what face you're gonna need your character to make. Mm-hmm. And um, kind of by doing that, by by exhausting all of the possibilities of getting these expressions out, you can start to learn your character more. Mm-hmm. Um, just by drawing head after head after head until you get some type of consistent formula. Um, but it's definitely a process. It's not something that's gonna come. After two drawings, you may have to do fifty drawings. You may have to do a hundred drawings. Yeah, um, that good old iterative well, drawing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> um, but an- another thing with comic comics that I have on my mind a lot is um, the the amount of time that people take to consume them after I'm finished, mm-hmm. and because um, in the past I've had some really involved projects where I chose a style that was maybe a little too involved and by the time it was over people would uh, read my comic and sure they would enjoy it but they'd kind of be done in like five seconds and so I would be like hmm maybe I should have a less involved style next time like finding that balance is quite quite challenging it yeah it really can be because it's like um you really got to find that formula of how long do you want to spend on a page? Um, but then that can range, you know, it's not as a simple question as that. It's like, okay, how long do I want to spend on thumbnails? Um, is this way I'm lining quick enough or like not only quick, but like, is it good? Is it like, you know, does it look like you or are you trying to force yourself into a different style just to Mm. get it done? Um, 
in a more streamlined way. And yeah, it's just another was one of those weird things with um with finding a formula to work. Um yeah, I, I definitely agree with you. Uh, it's just like, okay, I finished this like sixteen page comic and it's taken me literally three years to maybe finish sixteen pages and someone may read it in three minutes. <laughs> um but really honestly that's just you know, that's maybe the way it is sometimes. Yeah. And um Kind of the other, it, it can be like a personal, you know, personal achievement though. It's just like, I know someone may read this in like, you know, three minutes or so and they may not, may like it, they may not, but it's like, I did it and it's done. Like, you know, that's a project under your belt. That's more things learned. That's another step taken. Um, and you can only keep learning from there. That's true. Um, it, it's good yeah. to remember that, uh, and keep, be mindful of that more often. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I know myself, I can get really sucked into my work sometimes. Um, but uh, you, you mentioned something about like the with the when you're making comics, the the typical the the, the work routine behind it and kind of just being aware of the work you're creating as you're creating it. Um, how, how do you like, uh, I don't know, how do you stay mindful of what you're doing and how do you, I, I guess, take a step back sometimes and be like, oh, maybe I'm spending too much time on this thing, or maybe this doesn't look uh, how I want it to look at all. What Do you have any, like, techniques? What would your typical work routine be? Um, Definitely always thumbnails first. Um, one, of the, one of the biggest things that I've ever been taught is, um, you know, you could do your first pass drawing, and you could love it. It could be the thing that you love the most. And be like, this is it. This is the composition that I'm going to go with. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this. And, um, you know, you could do that. Or you could, like, get that done and you could feel so great. And you, you got that first thumbnail down, that first thumbnail as absolutely beautiful. And then be like, okay, like, just in case, I'm going to do 15 more thumbnails. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to exhaust every possible option because, like, you may have been stuck on that one idea. And the one idea may be really, really great. Um, but there could be an even better idea behind thumbnail number eight or, you know, thumbnail number 12 or something. And it's like, you may not be quite there to the, to the right amazing one. And I think it's that idea of, of, you know, with not just comic pages, but like redrawing, uh, rethinking, how can I put this panel, um, like, you know, a different direction. Is there a different way I can convey this emotion or a sense of urgency um, by the way I set these panels up or something like that. It's definitely use, doing this, um, doing a, a technique of thumbnails uh, first to really exhaust all possible options and, and find the best one out of all of them. Because hmm. uh, most of the time you don't even go with the first idea that you went with and that's fine. Um, but yeah, it, I think that it, it's hard because um, a lot of times, you know, I do that first thumbnail, the first app, and I'm just like, I really don't want to change this page because this is perfect how it is. Um, but then you got to kind of push a little bit more, like, okay, do 10 more thumbnails. Like, you know, what will hurt if you do 10 more thumbnails or 10 more setups? And um, you may find something new. You may find something that works a lot better and you really, really like, and you wonder, you know, why you wanted to go with the first one in the first place. Well, yeah, that's definitely the biggest part of the process is thumbnailing because it, it sets you up. It sets up the, the flow for the rest of it. Yeah. You got, you got to get your reps in. <laughs> I, yeah, I, they sure. teach us at school that to do that quite a bit. Yeah. It's, um, they have that along with, um, keeping color charts in a way I, with coloring a chronicle. Um, the, the thing that I found is, you know, that, the biggest issue um, is obviously coloring. There's a, you're kind of inside a house um, and it's during midday, midday, and eventually it does reach, you know, like sunset and then night. And the hard part is um, how do I make these colors seem like coherent mm -hmm. at different times of day? Hmm. And it can it totally can vary from person to person deciding or depending on what comic you do um but what i have done is i've for this one at least i've settled with overlays um and i keep the same base color and then by using multiply shadows of different colors and stuff like that or or overlays i've managed to get these different moods 
Nice. Um, but I, I do always keep a little color swatch to the side to make sure that I don't stray from color to color. And it's just like, why is this orange different from this orange? Um, it's really great to, to make sure you have a little help key for yourself. Yeah, coming from the the digital painting world, um, I, I I do a lot of uh, of blending and over blending and over rendering, um, and mm-hmm. I I've fallen down a lot of rabbit holes where I kind of just start color picking my own stuff, and then I I end up desaturating things I didn't want to, um, and it's mm-hmm. like, and I I like my my palette's still there, but like it's so easy to turn off that layer sometimes and just like put blinders on and just do the render thing and just get out of control. Yeah, that's a, that is definitely a, a pitfall to hit with digital art is anything is possible, but that's also sometimes a little bit of a challenge is anything's possible. Yep. <laughs> just keep moving like that. You'll be like, okay, okay, like, I'll just kind of make it look like feathers and like, okay, maybe I'll just like render the feathers a little bit more. Like, uh, maybe a little bit more. And then you, you kind of get lost, and then, you, like, you zoom out, and then just, like, nothing else is rendered. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, wait. Oh, oh, boy. And, yeah, it's definitely that idea of, of trying to find that formula for the whole piece of, of making sure you zoom out and you step back. It's the same thing with, I guess, with painting traditionally. you got to step back from your painting and step away from your sketch or your painting and, and look at it in the big picture. Remember to zoom out on your canvas and... Um, Look at that at the big picture. Yeah, I can, I can definitely agree that is, um, that's a little bit of a problem. Or, 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 not, or yeah, not a problem. Or, yeah, or well, else you'll be stuck with one really great feather on a, on an entire wing for a bird, and everything <laughs> else is Play-Doh mush. <laughs> Absolutely. Or you're just like you finish up like you know like a section. You're just like, oh man, like that lighting is gorgeous. And then you like you zoom out, like the light source is an entirely different place. And it's like, ah, oh, <laughs> wait a second, <laughs> not quite what I had in mind. That's a strange beast to uh, to wrestle with. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But um, for sure. I wanted to, to also cover some of your other projects that you uh, were working on. I know you've you've got a. You've got a lot of irons in the fire right now. Um, the, you mentioned yeah. me a, a game poster series, a children's book, a, a video game, and other comics. Uh, anything else you wanted to? You're you're really excited about that you might wanted to 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 talk about here. Oh my gosh! Yeah, all of them. Um, <laughs> I actually um, uh, for a lot of these, I actually partnered up with some people. Um, which which is a thing that that's super fun it, it's not for i guess it's not always for everyone um but i'm having a blast doing it um i started a comic with um a friend of mine uh they're known as cream x butter on instagram okay um and we actually hung out together and i was i was down in their town and we were driving around and we saw this uh we we saw what we thought was a sign for a store called bargain basement <laughs> and we like literally we were like so like taken aback by it like i kept driving and i was like oh my god we gotta turn around we gotta go stop and we gotta find that thing and um i managed to like turn around and i go down the same street and i swear i swear to you like the sign was gone what we went back we, two minutes later we couldn't find the sign yeah and then that's where everything started formulating um <laughs> we were like like oh what if it's a store that's like alive and then like you know like the sign was only there to lure us in and like you know it'll take us as victims and it's just like you know it it started going these like really 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 crazy directions of like what if it's like a haunted antique store and like they put that sign out and they try to lure people into the antique store and then they steal their souls or something and um it's a venus flytrap for thrifty people yeah absolutely it's that that idea (laughs) eventually it um it evolved into a comic called bargain basement um we kept the name because we were so we were so like thrilled with it um and it's now like uh it's about an antique store called bargain basement um and it's a little bit kind of like i guess the example is like twilight zoney where um it's anthology stories Uh, now they all take place in the same universe um but it's more or less like someone buys an object from bargain basement and, um, you know, this object had some type of haunted or cursed property or, 
we start out looking at an object and this object, you know, contains a story with it and then eventually it finds its way back to bargain basement. Um, yeah, that's one project I'm particularly thrilled about. I really could not do, you know, anything without the help of my friend. Um, that's, that's one that we're working on right now. We got, uh, she had sent me, um, a beautiful page that she lined and I'm in the process of coloring it and I'm working on a page for her. So that level of, you know, collaborations makes it a lot easier. It's, it's so, so fun to work on that project. We're really excited to try to get it up off the ground. I am, I am all about this project. I love it already. Yeah. <laughs> I'm um, so thrilled. Um, it's, I think it's one of the ones I'm like kind of most excited about. Uh, Cream has done a lot of comics in the past and I love every single one of them. Um, so I'm really, really excited to work with them on this. Um, on the topic of uh, collaborating, um, I, you're, mm -hmm. you're someone who does that a lot, and I, I also am, and I, I, I love doing that. Um, what, what, what's something about like collaborating that, like, I don't know, just gets your creative juices flowing or uh, inspires you? What, what do you like most about it? I guess. Man, I guess like for me, it's like a. I guess kind of the motivation, um, like uh, like uh, we were talking about earlier about about community, and it's kind of that same idea where it's like when you work with someone else, it's like you know someone else there is there to motivate you. Mm -hmm. If you get a little bit down or like you know like oh man like you know I really don't like this page, it's really great to have someone someone be there to help um, in a way. Yeah, but it also could be of different talents. Uh, like I'm actually working with. Uh, AV Knights, um, a game designer um, or game developer on a game that we're creating, and mm. I I cannot code for the life of me. I do not understand code. I don't understand how to work any like uh, I think he uses Unreal Engine. I have no idea how to use that at all. Um, and I guess that's kind of where that level of collaboration comes in. And I just came to him and he's like. Yeah, I make games. And I was like, you know, I've been wanting to make a game. And he's like, oh, cool. Well, I know how to make games. And you can draw some things. And I was just like, okay, well, we've got the two components for this. Like, why not do it? Like, let's just, let's see what happens. Nice. And I guess that's kind of where things can, um, can start. Where um, it's kind of the same thing where, you know, my friend Cream has done comics in the past. Um, and they're very seasoned with making these amazing comics. And, like, you know, I sometimes I struggle with the consistency of it. So I was just like, you know, what if we what if we made a comic? And um, there's definitely things to learn with from your collaborators. Uh, and, you know, I guess they, they can learn, you know, from you as well. But it's definitely been, like, really great opportunity to collab with other people to get their side of things, how they go directly through their process because you got to work with them step by step it's no longer just like a one person creation job it's like you know merging your creative processes together yeah I, it's I, really, I love it it's real fun i think you put you put it really well i i, I love it too and um yeah just just to <clears throat> to work with someone and communicate and synergize is it's is a lot of mm -hmm. fun there's there's and there's stuff you can make together that might have not been able to make otherwise everyone knows yeah. something and not everyone knows everything yeah that's that's for sure it's fitting fitting a puzzle together um and yeah there's definitely things to be learned from that um where it's you know because i'm working with av knights he's like oh yeah like you know like coding this is like just like this and this and i'm like whoa like it's it's really like you just do that and you just like yeah and it's i don't know it's like crazy you, you get to learn like you know without this i wouldn't know how to make games and i still don't really but like because this opportunity to collab with people it's there um it, it's really great because it lets you look into their side of things um it, it's just like a it's a whole nother language you're learning sometimes yeah that's a great um, way that's a great way to put it yeah yeah it's it's great to have that opportunity to share with with other people to share that knowledge and revel in it together that's <clears> awesome <throat> well um other, would you be able to talk about maybe some other projects you're working on i know uh there's a, a game poster or a children's book also um yeah i can't talk a lot about the children's book 
Um, but, I think John um, drawing was the same way. <laughs> yeah, this one, uh, it's one of those things where this is, uh, this is regular Tab Perry and not Perry after dark Perry. <laughs> gotcha. Um, <laughs> This is this is not incognito tap Perry. Um, yeah, and I've gotten um, a call from a, a publisher. Actually, it was it was through a friend of mine, um, uh, and he's like, "Hey, these guys are looking for um, you know for illustrators." Like, I told them you'd be a great fit for it. We can set up a meeting, and that's just kind of how it started. Um, we're still very, very, very early in the process, um, and they're they're wonderful, wonderful people. Um, I, I really can't talk, I guess, a lot about it, um, other than, I guess, <laughs> vagueness. Um, but again, it, it's that idea of, uh, it's a whole different type of excitement. Um, where, you know, like, I'm excited to make a comic, but I can take a while to make this comic. You know, I set my, I can set my own schedule, my own pace with this. Um, but when you work with a company, um, mm. that's a whole different thing, because... Because they have a set schedule that they need to work on. They need to have time uh, to get, I guess, you know, the example is a book. Um, they have a set time they need to get this book published by. They have a set time that they need to get the information from their writer um, and, and put the book together in the first place to get the first copy of the, and proof of the book um, before you even start sending it out. Um, and it's a, it's a whole different ballpark. It's a whole different process, and it's a lot more rigor. Um, because there's a lot riding on it. Um, and it's, again, it's like that whole level, whole new way of learning collaboration, uh, but in a very different way. Um, it's definitely, it's definitely a learning curve. Um, a lot has happened in just, just this past month hmm. with, with working with people. Um, but it's a, it's all a very exciting opportunity, uh, to try to get it done. That's cool. Yeah, I, I, I feel you on that. I, I used to uh, come from that world. I, I was an in-house designer uh, mm -hmm. for the Ren Fair, and I used to have to uh, do kind of design and make stuff the same day. And yeah. uh, that could be a little stressful sometimes because you have to kind of turn down the slider of quality sometimes <laughs> and just mm -hmm. compromise pretty hard. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's it's definitely a new, different type of process because, um, you know, when you're a student and you know we we both are or were students, um, they give you around three weeks or something to work on stuff. Um, but in your mind, with that, it's just like, okay, this is like student work, and it, it may not be as like a serious setting of working in your mind. Um, but whenever you start getting to, into that like professional professional working world, it's it's entirely different, and it's a whole different mindset of like, all right, like you know, this is me. Like you are your own business as an artist. You're everything. You're your own art director. You're your own um, finance, you know, person. You set your own meetings. You have make your own office. You make your own hours and stuff like that. And it's a whole different type of rigor you got to get into. Um, and time management is definitely a big thing of it. Yeah, you're totally um, accountable. Of, yeah, it's it's really crazy. Um, because, you know, you don't go into, you know, a regular 9 to 5 job and just be like, okay, hey, like, you know, I'm working 9 to 5. This has been pre predetermined. I know exactly what I'm doing. It's like, okay, like, I also got to clean the house today, but I got to make sure I get this page completed. <laughs> and, um, oh, man, like, my printer is out of ink. I had to go run and get ink so I can make sure I print off, you know, um, these examples to mail out or something. It's... It's a lot being uh, being an artist, and people do a fantastic job of it. Um, but yeah, you're your own you're your own business. I think that's um, a good uh, mm -hmm. transition to maybe talk about a little more about the freelance world because um, I know how both sides of those are, and uh, I've I've had the cushy uh, studio job where it's a nine to five, and then I can come home and just uh, clock out and check out. But with freelance, sometimes it's sometimes I'm in like a perpetual state of always worrying all day, and that can be mm -hmm. twice the amount of work. Sometimes my days are 10 a.m. to 2 a.m., and that's just how it be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it can it, especially whenever you're um you can't do it as your supplementing job. 
um, it's really hard because, uh, yeah, like, for example, you could work, um, like, uh, four to, like, midnight job, and um, that helps you, that helps you pay your rent, that helps you buy your groceries and stuff like that. But, like, you know, you still want to work on your commissions, uh, for example. And I, I agree with you, sometimes your work night starts when your other job ends. Um, and your days off aren't really your days off. You're, it's just your days off from your one job. And then, you know, it's it's work day for your art job. Um, it's a grind, yeah. No, yeah, it's definitely a grind. That's a problem that I've... I don't want to... I shouldn't say a problem, but it's something... It's a new learning curve that I ran, run into right now is... Um, I actually, literally today, before we got on this, this call, I just finished moving out of my... Uh, out of an apartment. Mm -hmm. um, and... My studio right now has has is set up enough where I have some desks in it, but there's like boxes everywhere. But it's like I still can't stop. Like I've got these headshots um, that I got to do. I've got these what fifteen pieces of art that I need to package and I need to mail out to clients or yeah, mail out to clients. Um, and then throughout the work week, I have a job in which I work like six to nine hour shifts, um, and it's. It's a hard thing to try to manage, um, to try to get that all through. Um, but a good piece of advice I heard is like, if you if you want to be an artist, you really got to be serious about it. Yeah. Um, you you have to make this time. Like you know, you may you may be super super tired from work, and like you, know, you may have a rough day from work. But like if you really 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 want to be an artist, you really got to keep working. You always got to keep creating. You really have to keep keep putting out content and keep improving and researching and uh, it's it's a hard it's a hard thing to do um but it, you can make it manageable you can make it make it work for you with yeah with the, like you know, like we said time management and self-discipline of it yeah those those are uh those are the the, the biggest factors uh sometimes mm -hmm. when you you come home from your job or or maybe you're you're waking up and you have work later in the in the evening you, you those are the hours that you objectively have in the day and uh you you have whatever you need to do there's you gotta you gotta find a way to get into the mindset that you're gonna be productive during those hours or else they'll just disappear because time's our most valuable asset man yeah for sure it's it's definitely yeah you you really gotta make sure that um you gotta set your own schedule for it and um, it, it may not always be easy, but in the end, it'll it'll pay off. It'll definitely pay off yeah. uh, if you just keep working at it. Yeah, and and there's there's proof that it, it gets better or it pays off. I I, I follow mm -hmm. a lot of artists and I see them uh, thriving, and some of them like leaving their job they didn't really want to have, and now they're moving into full time positions, doing what they really want to do. Mm -hmm. Um, but they, they paid their dues and sometimes you just got to do that. Yeah. It's, yeah, that's the biggest thing is, um, whenever I had gone through my mentorship process, um, the biggest question I had was how do you begin? Because like you, you like we had just discussed, you can do art and you can have your other job, but that kind of step into the real world of, of working for your full time job is so, so different. Um, and it can be kind of scary. And honestly, I don't even, you know, I'm not even there yet. Um, and it, it's still a little bit of unknown for me. Um, but a lot of what I gathered was people was just like, they were like, just one day they just did it. They decided that, um, you know, like someone had to move back in with their parents and that's what they had to do in order to be able to afford um, pursuing freelance the whole time. And now they're extremely successful. They are a very well sought after freelance artist. Um, and it is, it can be very, very scary to take those first steps. Um, but you're not going to be able to in the first place unless you, you start to try to work towards it. Yeah, it's, it's definitely, um, definitely a, like a look while you leap type of ordeal um, oh yeah yeah and and that can be yeah that can definitely be scary and this is probably way easier just said than done but uh i, mm. I for anyone out there like possibly thinking of or, or going into 
doing the freelance thing or just succeeding in the art career like there are others out there such as us and like that we're we're happy to share what our struggles and tips and tricks of what we do to get ourselves motivated and stuff like that so just know that mm -hmm. the the art even though it's hard the art community is pretty uh pretty helpful if, if you just uh just want to ask what to do yeah that's the greatest thing that's the greatest thing i think about the community i found is like um there's so many resources for help out there because we all began we all most likely began in the same place where you know we didn't just get an art job right away we didn't graduate uh, maybe not all of us uh didn't graduate high school and, and then go just super super successfully into the art field right away there was always mm -hmm. those stepping stones um and everyone's beginnings may be a little bit different um but there's always, always, always the same type of type of community, um, and this great, great advice that you can get from building a network of friends, um, a network of artists, and a network of friends. Um, and, and you know, like art podcasts like these really help. This is one fantastic podcast nowadays. I've noticed are gaining in popularity, um, and there's a couple, you know, a couple art podcasts out there like this, and it's just great to be able to work and listen to because it's like man, like there's someone out there that's an artist like me. And like, I was just asking myself, how do I solve this problem? And like, they did it and they surpassed it. And um, I guess having, having that look into it makes it all seem so possible. Yeah. It's scary, but like, it really makes it things like, makes it, it makes it seem like, yeah, like you can get there, like you can achieve it too. Um, and it's really great uh, in order to be able to have that community out there like that. Yeah. Uh, and anyone uh, listening to this, that's that's kind of the, the feeling I w tried to cultivate with this podcast. It's maybe you something you put on in the background when you're uh, when you're drawing. Then after a while, you're listening to it, and it might you know help help, help you feel like um, there there's other people out there that might be trying to do what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah, yeah, I can say for certain. Last time, the first time I listened to this podcast, I was like painting, and I think I was listening to your interview with um, John Rawls. Uh, that... Mr. John Drawing, yeah. <laughs> I was listening to hit to that one, and I was just like, "Oh my god, like this is such a cool podcast!" <laughs> it was so great to work on in the background because it's like I don't have to watch anything; I can just like, you know, listen along and create. And um, everyone has these has similar but such different experiences, and you get to hear hear how they problem solved it and it's it's so so fun to yeah. listen along at work i appreciate that first shout out by the way <laughs> gave yeah, us that little sure. boost <laughs> well um uh, i think we covered most of uh what i wanted to cover especially with your projects um i do have mm -hmm. a couple closing questions here kind of maybe more uh big big idea or kind of zooming out mm -hmm. here for, talking about the future but uh i don't know what what is um what has been the most rewarding project so far in your professional career i know it's still and it's uh still young but like has there had been any projects like that um oh man um Gosh, that is a hard question. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I know it's a big one because I, you, you've had a lot of things you've made. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm trying to think for certain what the what the one was or what, there's one project. I guess it's it really I guess could be in a way the many small like commissions I've taken over the years. Um, hmm. When something like without those like i wouldn't i don't think i had would have been able to afford my apartment uh, you know some of the stuff i do is I, I rely so hard on those and those have been so fulfilling um and like i remember starting out with like i'll draw your character three dollars for a colored headshot and um now it's kind of crazy fun to be able to be like hey i'm out here like you know headshots are like 75 dollars for like a fully colored headshot and um it's that, that level of development um, and learning throughout every single commission I got, every single, you know, one of those small projects impacted such a huge thing. Hmm. Um, so I can't, yeah, I can't say if it was one, one 
big project, but it's kind of like all those small commissions I've done, uh, mostly for the anthro community, uh, over the years really was such a huge, such a huge influence and motivator. The fact that people were like, liked my art enough to want to give me money for it. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's still a crazy concept to me now. It's like, it's like kind of crazy to think like, wow, you like, you like how I draw so much that you actually want to like, to give me money? Like, <laughs> oh, maybe? Like, I don't know. Like, sometimes it's just so crazy. I'm so like, I like tickled pink, you know, thinking, <laughs> thinking of people out there that's like, like it. Um, and it's really a lot of those that have, have paved the way to help me find what I want to do nowadays. Yeah. Um, I really can't, yeah, I can't think the the group of internet friends and you know the community I've had enough for 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 getting where I am now. By the way, are your commissions still open? <laughs> yes, my commissions are still open right now. Yeah. Um, Perry's commissions in. are open, everybody. Mm -hmm. So commission. So <laughs> hit me up. I can draw most nearly a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted um, to sneak a shameless yeah, plug I'm in there. For it. Pardon? I just wanted to sneak a little shameless plug in there. Yeah. <laughs> Leave that below. You can like and subscribe. <laughs> Smash that like button. Heck um, yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Um, yeah, that's awesome. I, I, I also get a lot of fat satisfaction out of literally any commission I do. Um, I've only had mm -hmm. commissions open for a very small amount of time mostly during the summer and stuff like that. But it's been mm -hmm. a very, like, intimate and cool thing because, like, I, I get to ask this person everything that they like about whatever this one thing they want me to draw, and, like, and I give it to them, and they're just over the moon, and that's oh, one of the best feelings in the world. Yeah, it's great because, like, when people commission you, you know, they probably have an idea in their mind. You know, they're like, they probably have, they know that you're going to draw it, but they, they probably have some type of idea where it's just like, okay, I'm kind of imagining that it's going to be, it'll be like this, but they, they don't know what the outcome is going to be. And it's so great, like, when you get to give it to them and they're just like, whoa, like, you know, like, this is like exactly what I was thinking. Or like, like, I had no idea, like, it would turn out like this. It's like so, it's such a, it's such a rewarding feeling, like, like seeing how people, how excited people get. Um, because it's just like, yeah, like I did it. Like, you know, I was able to capture, capture what they were looking for. Um, and it's a, it's a rewarding feeling being able to help bring people's ideas to life like that. Um, I got a little you know, taste of that, uh, when I worked at Hershey Park as a caricature artist. Oh, um, yeah, that sounds so cool. It, it was like, it was like that feeling, but like rapid <laughs> fire throughout the day. Um, yeah, all <laughs> Did, there was there was a little bit of pressure because like people stand behind you and they watch you make it. <laughs> Not really a huge fan of that. More prefer to be in my little hermit cave. Um, but it was a good experience because like j just like s someone on vacation with their family and they're just like draw my kid as Batman. I'm like you got it, bud. And I do the, like a quick thing with like. Um, what did I use? I used oil pastels, and it was just oh, like wow. a fifteen-minute drawing. And I'd give them to the kid, and they'd be like, "That's me! I'm Batman!" I'm like, "That's right, dude! You're Batman!" Oh, and they just run off with a <laughs> drawing in their hand. <laughs> oh, this looks so nice. Yeah, it's, but it, that's the other cool thing is they get to like they get to watch it come to life. Um, I get how it can be nerve-wracking, but it's like you know you can only imagine like like there it is, like like it's it's coming to life like right before your eyes. Um, <laughs> And for you, it's like, okay, like, you know, like, sketch. And then, like, you know, we do we do this next, like, step-by-step -step process. But, like, for people watching, I bet it was just like, whoa. Like, yeah. what are we doing? Like, it's so crazy. <laughs> yeah, this is fun. Because you stream a lot. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah um, your streams are super, super, super cool. Twitch.com slash draw full draw. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, I, I guess, like... I guess that's kind of why I, I stream. I, I kind of like that uh, feeling of... I, I've always been that, that kid who would just, like, be drawing at the lunch table and some and just people just stand behind me and just like, oh, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm drawing. 
and I don't know <laughs> it's just natural for me for me to do that and to look over and just see what the comments are it, I enjoy it it's yeah it's so it's real fun again it's just that idea of going back the idea of community like <laughs> you know you're you're drawn with other folks um and you you can get great feedback from them or you just have have a fun time yeah. and it's fun to be able to share those moments with people like that it's um, nice because um i can also get my other artists friends in on it and i can like host them and stuff like that and they can just hop in and uh no matter where they are in the world we've i've got people on the other side of the world who just come in and see what i'm doing it's so crazy it's so so much fun <laughs> And, and and you you live stream too as well on uh, Picarto is that correct I think? Yeah, I live stream on Picarto. I I do that with my um, incognito mode name as Stitchy Face. Um, I don't stream as often as you. In fact, like I I was like man, I, like still streams a lot. Like and you're like <laughs> motivating me to like stream more because so I was like man, he's got this down pat. It's like I gotta like follow Phil's example. I gotta like. We keep keep going into it. So you've been motivating <laughs> me to try to keep streaming some more. So thank you for that. <laughs> no I've only recently got back into it in a big way because uh, just just the accessibility of just opening up open broadcasting software and just hitting stream is is really easy. Yeah. Um, and I've also been really motivated by the fact that uh, I'm close to getting like Twitch affiliated, which helps you get mm -hmm. like ad revenue and stuff. I'm like 24 yeah. followers away, so like I've been streaming more, hoping that randos will just be like, "Oh, cool," and follow and just become part of the family. Yeah. Oh, Jazzy, this sounds so cool. I good luck with that. I bet you were gonna gonna get there soon. Thank you. <laughs> um. Oh, but but uh, but uh, back to you. Um, but we're kind of wrapping up here. But I I, I usually uh, ask this before we end, but. Uh, um, lastly, if you don't get to do, I guess, anything else with your art career, what is what would be the one dream project that you would like to hopefully co complete someday? Oh boy, um, probably a cover for The New Yorker. Nice. I think that that's a, that is, is a dream goal. Um, I didn't mention it, but I'm big into editorial art. Okay. Um, and I guess that that's a branch of freelance, and I've always, I don't know, I, I've always admired it. Um, and I think one day maybe a cover on The New Yorker, hopefully. Hopefully one day soon, maybe not. But uh, you'll never know, we'll never know what's going to happen. Um, open, obviously, to see where, where the art career takes me. That's awesome. So... Did, yeah. did you want to um, maybe plug any of your social media before we go to see uh, if for any of the listeners can give Perry a follow? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, gee, I'm on Instagram as Perry Penrod. Um, I'm also on my more professional book, book Tumblr is Perry Penrod. Uh, my regular Tumblr, my I guess my incognito tab, so to say Tumblr, is a little bit funky. Um, it'll probably be changing to Stitchy Face here soon. Um, as of now, it's called Paletiquette, so it's like palette etiquette. Gotcha. Little funky spelling. I wasn't um, sure how to pronounce it, so I'm glad that I know now. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's a little, little weird. Yeah, I'm on a. I can be found as either Perry Penrod on websites or Stitchy dash face or one word stitchy face or stitchy underscore face uh, those are kind of my two internet aliases and again this is where it's easy where you have like draw fill draw like is everything um, that fits so well rather than <laughs> here's like the eight different names you can probably maybe find the author <laughs> gotcha. uh, I think you're also on one. Twitter and uh, art station yes I am on Twitter um I'm on Twitter as uh, Stitchy underscore face or um, Perry Penrod. Art Station, I'm not super active on anymore. Um, I believe that's also Perry Penrod on Art Station as well. Gotcha. Yeah. Awesome. And then, of, of course, regular DeviantArt, in case any of you guys are DeviantArt people, Stitchy face on DeviantArt. Nice. So. And I also want to mention that 
again that Perry takes commissions, so I agree. Give him your money. <laughs> An email or a direct message, and I will draw whatever your heart desires. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for taking right. time out of uh, your busy day. I'll, I'll let you uh, go go back to uh, enjoying this beautiful Sunday. And uh, yeah, Sunday of unpacking. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me on here. This I was so 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 thrilled whenever you're just like hey you want to do this and i was like go oh, man yeah i do <laughs> uh it's so fun i'm really 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 glad you're doing this i can't i'm always so excited um whenever you release a new uh release a new video i haven't been able to listen to the last one yet um but i'm probably going to like as soon as i probably get off the phone with you uh, yeah thank you for having me it's it's been really awesome phil no problem thank you for coming on all right everybody yeah. That has been this has been Virtual Made a podcast where we talk about creating anything and everything. Let's keep this virtual.